It's Final Friday. Charlie, before the show, I gave you a list of categories, and I asked you to tell me four people you follow who fit in those categories. Your first pick is in the category, Someone Who Makes the Internet a Better Place, and you said Scary Pockets, which is on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, at Scary Pockets. Uh, And this is a funk band. I had never heard of them, but I realized that I have actually met one of the people who's in it. But first, let's talk about the band. What's the the deal with Scary Pockets, and, and why do you love it so much? Yeah, so Scary Pockets, I think, are the most fun cover band on the internet. They are a mashup of so many different concepts that are so well executed. So, A, cover songs on YouTube, wildly successful. Very well done cover songs in a funk style, even more successful. And then add in some of the internet's best musicians. You know, some of these people that we were talking about before, like maybe they don't have millions of followers, but they might have hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands thousands and they're wildly talented what scary pockets does is they take a well-known song bring in special guests to join the amazing house band which are made up of some of the best session musicians and players in los angeles and then yeah you get the special guest who brings in their own audience and every single video you're going to get an amazing cover of a song you love like i love the white stripe seven nation army version that features elise trow who is one of my favorite youtube creators put this all together and it's just the best party in a video that you can find and if you ever actually need a playlist of like totally party safe music you just throw on any scary pockets music in the background and everyone's going to be happy yeah you mentioned that these are really talented session musicians could you briefly define what what is a session musician oh yeah a session musician is someone who is remarkably talented who can play basically anything and get pulled into recording sessions usually in the major music cities so Los Angeles, Nashville, Atlanta, New York, London, when another major artist needs, hey, I need some drums on this song and we don't actually have a drummer in our band, they call in a session musician. And session musicians often play on thousands and thousands of records and they never get the credit that they deserve, but they are behind the things that you love. A lot of these session musicians and special guests who come on, who appear in these videos, and then there's two permanent members of Scary Pockets, Ryan Lerman and Jack Conti. Um, and depending on your bubble, you might know Jack as the CEO of Patreon or from his other band, Pump La Moose. Um, how did you get introduced to, uh, to to Scary Pockets? Was it through one of those musicians or one of the session musicians? How did you become a fan? It was through Jack because I had followed his original band, Pump La Moose, and they did a lot of really fun covers they also did a lot of original material. Maybe it's a little more laid back or tame. It's like it's the mellower version of Scary Pockets and the energy of Jack Conti, who I don't know exactly how he works today, but at one point he was still like only making a salary as a creator on Patreon, even though he was also the CEO. Huh. He's an amazing pianist. He's a ball of joy to watch. So he created Scary Pockets and I inevitably was going to start following it but it's more that like it keeps finding me because Mm. of all of these other guests that they have on the show or songs that i like and so it's algorithmically very successful i think because it's just always in the constellation of other things that i like and then it gets recommended to me again and again yeah the youtube algorithm it it, it will keep on hunting you forever yeah (laughs) So how does Scary Pockets make the internet a better place? And what is something that the rest of us can learn from their example? Ooh, primarily that it's just fun. That the people who are participating in it are full of ecstatic joy. That's sort of the starting place. And then it adds on the fact that they are savvy and know everything that they're doing, I think, very effectively, such that they're like when they do these sessions, they bank a ton of songs. They do a ton of songs in a single recording kind of thing so that they have a bunch of video to put out over time because it's very highly produced, which is expensive. And so they they figured out how to make something very good in a reasonable sort of way. And yeah, I think that just the very talented people having a good time translates really well for me. It's not too serious. 
It's very silly, but it's really good. Yeah, just generally the the, the best way if you if you're a to use the word again, content creator online, ooh, and you're ooh. trying to keep costs down, you can do something by yourself, or you can do what I'm doing, where I, you know, interview a different person, or you maybe what you and, and Nate do, where you're, it's your two co-hosts, and sometimes it's just the two of you on the episode, right? That's like the classic way of keeping costs down, but I love the Scary Pockets model of like, no, we are going to bring in these extremely talented folks you haven't heard of, and we are going to commit to that as like the model for... Yeah these videos there's not a lot of people that play effectively to the algorithm that i I, where i think that the algorithm somehow enhances the material that they make and yet i think they've just found this very they've threaded this needle where actually this is just what i want and it serves the youtube algorithm very successfully i don't mean to be a total cynic but i find that my tiktok algorithm has a very particular aesthetic which doesn't give a lot of space for long form thought out discourse, which is why I love podcasts, right? Exactly. And (laughs) and the format is not meant for that. And so instead we get a lot more irony and silliness and fun, like all things that I also want in my life. But the algorithm often just, yeah, I think leads towards formats that the medium is the message, if you will. And I think in the case of Scary Pockets, they have actually, they have married those things effectively. Definitely. Well, before we move on to your next follow, I just want to jam for 30 seconds. Other than Seven Nation Army, which you mentioned earlier, what's another Scary Pocket song that you love and what makes it so great? Oh, my gosh. OK, well, now we just have to go look at them because there's, they're, they're countless. I watch them all the time. <laughs> I just watched a, a cover of Julia Michaels Issues uh, the other day, which I loved. I'm just I'm just scrolling through the ones that I have recently. Yeah, viewed. yeah. I mean, A, there's way too many. I need to go. Like, now I actually just want to go and watch all of them. We're going to pause the podcast for two hours where we all go catch up on Scary Pockets. <laughs> okay. Here's my favorite one. My favorite video is their version of Daft Punk's Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger. Ooh. Done on a rooftop. And the lead player is playing talk box, which is where you put this funny tube in your mouth and you play a keyboard and it makes this wild sound. (laughs) It's kind of like Daft Punk who, when they made their 2013 album, Random Access Memories, kind of pulled back all the electronics and were like, actually, we're a disco band. The version that (laughs) Scary Pockets does is kind of like, well, actually, Daft Punk is a funk band. It's the best. Well, that was Scary Pockets, which is on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Scary Pockets. 